This next comedian is representing Milton, Massachusetts. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Corey Rodriguez. <laughs> People are looking at me like, that guy does not look like a Rodriguez. What is that? That is Corey Johnson right there. Corey Washington, that is not Rodriguez. <laughs> I made a mistake, I was hungry. I was hungry on the way here tonight. I stopped at McDonald's. Ugh. I don't think anybody eats McDonald's nowadays and when they're done eating it, they're like, that was delicious. I think even little kids eat McDonald's and when they're done eating it, they're like, my stomach hurts. But I want to go back tomorrow. <laughs> McDonald's is the only food you eat and you feel it going down to every part of your body while you're eating it, right? I was like, I think I feel some Big Mac in my heart right now. I think I feel a nugget in my knee. How did it miss my stomach? <laughs> I don't care what fast food I get. If I order fries, I have to eat every french fry. Like I get a little depressed when the fries start running out. I'm like, oh my God. I could be driving down the street and I start running out of fries and I'll be digging in the bag. There'll be cars coming, I'll move the napkin like I know there was more fries in this bag. And finally I find that one little burnt piece of crunchy fry, I'm like, that's what I'm talking about right there, baby. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I haven't driven in a while and, and bought fries, but the other day I was cleaning my car and I found some fries in between the seat. And they look better than the day when I bought them. I was like, how do these fries look so good? How is there no bacteria on this fry? Do you know how unhealthy of a food you have to be for mold to be like, I don't eat that shit. I realize I trust the wrong people too. I trust the wrong people. Like I, I, trust, I, I trust the Greyhound. Don't trust the Greyhound. I used to ride on the Greyhound all the time. Whenever you go to ride on the Greyhound, the bus driver never looks like I'm gonna get you going where you need to go safely. <laughs> the bus driver looks like if we make it, we make it. Get on the bus. <laughs> I show up and the bus driver's shirt is dirty. I'm like, you don't have two Greyhound shirts? Where's your other shirt? And then I get on the bus and he doesn't even care about the other cars on the road. I'm on the bus, he's just pushing this little Honda Civic off the road. And I'm looking out the window, I'm like, oh my God, you better move, man, move! This guy's gonna kill you, move! And then I realize he can't see me because the windows are tinted and I'm black and... <laughs> Finally, I get sleepy on the bus. You know when you're on the bus and you wanna take a nap? I can't, I can't nap right away, I'll be on the bus trying to close my eyes. And every time I close my eyes, I hear the bus go I was like, why is the bus driver riding the rumble strip? What is he doing? Right, I feel like he's messing with me on purpose because I'm sleepy. So I start trying to make eye contact with the bus driver in the mirror, right? I start opening my eyes at different intervals. And one of the times I make eye contact with the bus driver in the mirror and I see him opening his eyes and I was like, are we all sleeping on this freaking bus? Don't trust the Greyhound. I trust animal shows, why? Why do I trust animal shows? They'll be like, if there's a dog chasing you, don't run. Fuck that, run. <laughs> Never in the history of dog chases has there been a dog chasing somebody like hur, hur, and the person stopped and the dog was like, you're lucky you stopped. <laughs> I was about to bite the shit out of you a second ago. <laughs> I was at my friend's house and he has a pit bull. Whenever I go to his house, it's scary because he has a pit bull and he never locks his door because he has a pit bull. So you show up and it's just a screen door, screen at the top, metal at the bottom. I get to the door, the screen's all torn up. And I get to the door and I'm looking in, I'm like, oh, and the dog's just waiting for me like, Arr. And I get to the door, I'm like, yo, come let me in. He was like, the door's open, just come in. I was like, you should just come let me in, right? <laughs> and then he said to me what guys say to other guys when you want to make them feel bad. He was like, stop acting like a little bitch and open the door. <laughs> I said, I feel like a little bitch right now. Why don't you come let me in? <laughs> and then he comes to the door like he's mad at me. He grabs the dog by the back of her collar and he's pulling her back by her collar and I could just hear her little feet hitting the floor like tuck, tuck, tuck. 
and I'm trying to squeeze by the dog, and he's just disrespecting me. The dog's like, hur, hur, and I'm like, oh. He was like, I hate when you come over. I was like, I hate when I come over too. He's like, oh. he's like you always act like a bitch. I said, I was born like that. I didn't care. I didn't care what he was saying. I was afraid. I was afraid. We get into his living room and he let the dog go. And he did something that people that own dogs do. This is the scariest shit in the world. We get in the living room, he lets the dog go. And he said, relax, relax. And just let the dog smell you. Oh. <laughs> that is the most fear that I ever have, right? Because the dog never smells an area of your body you don't care about, right? The dog was like <laughs> He said, stop backing up. I said, I'm scared. He said, the dog can smell fear. I said, well, he can definitely smell this pee running down my leg. Oh. He was laughing like, you little bitch. He was just laughing at me in the corner. I'm not super political, but I'll say this, right? If I was Obama and I wanted to get reelected, I feel like I would have said different shit before. I feel like I wouldn't have talked about schools and healthcare. I would have said different things. They would have been like, President Obama, what are you going to do to get reelected? I'd be like, uh, I'm going to change the alphabet. You'd be like, what? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, there's 26 letters, and I'm going to change it to 24. You'd be like, what the fuck did he just say? You ever listen to Obama speak? He'll just say somebody's first name and then their profession, and he'll make you think you know the person, right? He'll be speaking, he'll be like, uh, there was a woman from Kansas, and her name was Tammy. Uh, Tammy was a teacher. Uh, Tammy students weren't able to do their homework because they couldn't afford pencils. Uh, we can't have that for the American people. <laughs> You'll be sitting at home like, we gotta get Tammy, get some pencils. You don't even know Tammy's last name. You sending in money to the White House to the Tammy Fund for what? I love listening to him speak, though, because whenever he shows up somewhere to speak, he'll never speak about the issue at hand right away. He'll always talk about all the rapport he's been building in the town the last couple days. The bottom of the podium will say taxes. He'll never show up and be like, okay, uh, let's talk about taxes. He won't do that. He'll show up, he'll be like, uh, just the other day, I was in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I met a man by the name of Tim. Tim has no arms and no legs. He's been working at the same power plant since they opened in 1913. He does his job with his teeth. He has a wife named Susan. She works at the local high school. She has two sons, one named Robert and one named Jimmy. When Jimmy was six, he had a surgery on his patella. You're like, I don't give a fuck about this family. <laughs> You're never gonna meet this family. Never. Close your eyes for one second. Tell me you can't hear Obama saying this. Close your eyes. No arms and no legs, right? You, look, you have to picture his face. She wouldn't close her eyes. She's just looking at me. She's just staring at me with her eyes open, like, no. She put her hands in her pockets. It's a trick. Like, what do you think I'm going to do from the stage? Go, go, gadget arm. I'm going to steal your shit from here. What are you doing? You guys together? Yeah? Do you, uh, you still, you still? Why is that a bad question? That's sex, sir. Right, you guys still, yeah? Do one thing for me tonight. Tonight, I want you to do something. Tonight, right before you, right before you slip it in, I want you to make strong eye contact with her. And right before you put it in, I want you to say, no arms and no legs. Just try it. Just try it. And Facebook me. Let me know if it works. Hey, I'm Corey Rodriguez.